So let's have a look at the forces tab and what kind of forces you can apply to make the particles move in uh, certain ways. At the very top of the forces tab in the inspector, you'll see something called force annihilation. And this is basically the opposite. You'll um, be able to uh, set particles to not have any, any force here. Uh, for example, only source positions will make particles uh, be bound to their source position uh, each, each frame. Uh, currently we only have one birth position there, but if we were to set overflow offset here, uh, you'll see that uh, it won't have any forces and it will tag along uh, where the source positions are created. We're using the source transform here. That's why they tag along the rotation. Um, let's set the rotation to zero again and let's set the overflow set to zero. Um, Let's disable that and have a look at the lifetime positioning there. Uh, this is kind of weird that we start with the annihilation, how to not get any force, but this is a good section to, to be aware about when working with forces and how you can kind of constrain those. Uh, lifetime positioning is uh, basically moving particles using uh, animation curves. Um, let's try that out. So now we are moving the particles here on the X value uh, or on the X axis using a normalized uh, animation curve value. Uh, And this can be used to kind of create spirals and effects like that. Um, let's have a look at one of the, the example presets. And this is only using the lifetime positioning to, to create this spiral effect where it will uh, scale the position uh, using a normalized animation curve here. And it will also time scale uh, how particles move through this this uh, positioning you can scale the, the effect uh, use uh, source normal direction will will basically use the the direction of the source for this and uh, Along every uh, animation curve, you can uh, set the repeating number here for how this should act. So this can be used to create rather um, unusual behaviors or uh, structures. And uh, so that's the lifetime positioning. Let's just remove that from the scene. We have this thing called transition back to source. And this is kind of interesting. Um, you can use this to have particles move back to where they came from or where the, the source position is at the moment. And this is using the amount to transition back is using a normalized animation curve, where if we would uh, do this, put some more slack on the behavior. Uh, we could have, uh, let's jump to, uh, sorry, let's jump to this section a bit just to sort of show you a bit better or actually create spherical emission here. Uh, we, we will cover this also. I'm just trying to get a good uh, behavior here to show you. So at the moment, this is transitioning back to source using the amount over the lifetime specified by this animation curve. So uh, feel free to just play with that uh, to get a feel for <laughs> how, what to actually use it for. Um, 
you can also constrain the the force axis here by x, y, and z. Uh, so if you, for example, have this 2D scene, uh, you probably want to constrain the z value there for for your particles. And you can also set the maximum velocity. Um, so that is the force annihilation. Um, let's move over to what actually uh, applies force forces. Um, so the delta movement is you can apply a force to to the movement of the 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 source. Mm, let's set a bit of let's have a bit of initial local velocity there as well. So when the the source is moving, you can get the particles to shoot in that direction set by the delta movement strength. And then we have the initial global velocity set by minimum to maximum vector three values uh, when using method rectangular. So for example, if we want to have this shooting up at the y axis always globally, we could use that. And uh, using spherically, for example, initial local velocity will take the uh, source normal taken into account and currently uh, the normal is the transform itself and how that is rotated. So um, let's say we want to create this sort of behavior we could actually do like that. Uh, now it's it is shooting away on the y-axis uh, at the same rate and when we rotate the transform it will shoot over the transforms y-axis let's set that back to zero so the initial velocity shape you can actually mold the the uh, how much velocity is created on initial velocity um, and this does require a bit of just testing you know playing with how values are how the values are set here but let's say we want to not have any have any for force there on um, in the beginning, let's set that to zero. You can start to see this burst effect on the, the x-axis uh, linearly. So this could be, I uh, believe we should do this. Set the lifetime to burst. Um, and we could scale the particles up a bit. And let's do this sort of exaggerated effect on the y-axis instead. So you'll see that this can be used to, to create um, kind of uh, really specific explosion behaviors or yeah stuff like that and you can scale this value as well so that's how that works um, you can also specify the lifetime velocity which is done by X Y and Z animation curves where if we for instance want to if we would like to have particles move on a certain axis over time, applying more force, uh, we would use this. We could also bend the velocity. Uh, this was implemented as a sort of experimental feature, but I believe 
a lot of uh, users have been using this to uh, sort of emulate a turbulence effect when turbulence wasn't available. Um, this can also be used to kind of create these uh, spiral effects. We could have a look at the playground swirl. Uh, let's just disable this. And this is using the both lifetime velocity and velocity bending to to bend uh, the velocity uh, over a particle particle's lifetime. This requires a bit of just testing out. Uh, the type here is uh, initially set to source position where the bending will occur based on where the source position is in the scene. Using particle delta position will uh, bend the particles um, using where where the particle was the last frame and sort of bend that uh, path or bend that velocity uh, direction. Yeah, so so play along with this to just get a feel for how it uh, affects uh, the the forces. Uh, let's move back to the original effect we had going there. And um, I believe one of the most uh, welcomed feature to Particle Playground is the, the turbulence. You can do turbulence by simplex noise and Perlin noise. And the simplex uh, will create this branch type of uh, Type of effect. Let's set the lifetime to scramble light near, and we could amp up the particle count a bit. Set lifetime to a bit more. Let's do even more particles. And we could actually set initial velocity to something that isn't let's do something like this you can see that the particles are kind of moving in patterns here um, and this can be changed the scale of this resolution pattern can be uh, scaled and the simplex and the Perlin uh, noise algorithm will just repeat over uh, the entire scene. There is a manipulator uh, which can uh, affect turbulence within a specified range as well. That's good to know. Uh, the time scale will tell how particle or how the 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 turbulence algorithm will move over time. If we set this to zero, we will have the same uh, uh, turbulence pattern. And a really low value, the pattern will, will, will uh, uh, sort of emerge slowly. And setting a really high value will make the, the, the pattern move quickly over time. And the Perlin is more of a sort of wavy behavior, perhaps good for underwater type of uh, effects. You can also set the lifetime strength here for the particles, how much um, turbulence should be added over lifetime. Um, so for instance, if you want to start with no turbulence and move over to having turbulence that is done by by the animation curve there which is normalized going from zero value to to one so that's how that works um, you could for example create um, uh, smoke uh, stuff like that using using this uh, 
just to show you there's one preset uh, doing this let's change the background color so you'll be able to see that so And we should cover the constant force as well. You can apply gravity to your particles, which initially has uh, a 9.81 um, on the y y axis, and you can damp the the overall uh, particles as well. How much you should damp the 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 forces over time. And then you can scale the entire force as well. And that covers the forces. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.